welcome back to a new video. So you can see I'm in a little bit of a different place than I usually am and that is because I am five hours up north in Cumbria. <laughs> so my dad and I have gone on a week-long holiday. We're in the Lake District which like I said is quite a long drive from where I live um, and yeah basically well we just wanted to go away for a week but we chose the Lake District specifically uh, because basically I want to do some night star photography. Uh, and also just generally some landscape photography, some nature photography. I'm just kind of trying to expand my portfolio and, you know, try out different types of, types of photography pretty much. So if you've been around here a while, you might remember that I went out and, you know, just took some wildlife and, you know, nature photos. Uh, a few macro things, I just, I messed around basically in the woods near my house and I really enjoyed that. So yeah, I basically just wanted to continue that and also try some new types. So today we are venturing out. Uh, into the Lake District, into the hills. We're gonna we're driving about an hour away um, into the hills so that I can. Well, it's about it's. I think it's almost one p.m. now. We're gonna be leaving in about half an hour because uh, well, I've got we've got to walk all the way down to the car and then we've got to drive there. So we'll be there at about two two fifteen ish, um, and the sun sets at ten past four. So we'll have about two hours to play with to kind of, you know, get the lay of the land, set up, take some landscape photos, talk to you guys, and then we'll be all set up and ready for when the sun sets. So yeah, that is the plan. And basically we're just gonna go and see what there is. You know, I have all my gear, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'm not really, I don't really know exactly what to expect. I mean, hills, realistically, there's gonna be lots of hills, probably a tree or two. I mean, you know, English landscapes, they kind of all look the same. I have been to the Lake District before, but that was quite a few years ago. Um, so yeah, it's just gonna be fun. We're gonna have fun exploring um, as much as my body will allow it anyway. <laughs> uh, and yeah, anyway, I'm just gonna bring you guys along. So it's just gonna be another behind the scenes video, probably a little bit vloggy because, you know, kind of got a bit of a trip and hopefully I'll be able to show you some of the nighttime stuff as well. Although I don't know how well the phone will pick it up, but I will try my best. Yeah, before we go, let me show you what gear I'm bringing with me. So, obviously I have my camera. This is the Fujifilm X-Pro2 that I've had for years. Love it still. Uh, I've currently got my 50mm portrait lens on this, but I am going to change that actually. This is just the last lens I used. So, I will probably put uh, my 23mm one on. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to bring all of my lenses because I haven't really got that many, so it'll be fine. <laughs> but as well as my camera with the... 50 millimeter lens that's currently on it. I'm going to be bringing my 35 millimeter lens, my 23 millimeter lens, which I think I'll switch out in a minute. And also my kit lens that just came with the camera. So this is just a zoom lens, but honestly, it really is an insult to call it a kit lens because it's pretty damn good. Obviously it's zoom, so it's, you know, slightly lesser quality than the prime lenses. But honestly, if I'm not sure what lens I'm gonna need, I always just put this on and it still performs great. Now, obviously when doing landscape photography, you kind of want to have a wider angle lens, which I don't have. Uh, it's on my list. Um, we'll see, might even get it for Christmas, who knows? Um, but yeah, obviously I don't have wide angle lens, but that's fine. Um, I, you know, I'm fine with the lenses I've got and you know, they're pretty big landscapes anyway. So I don't think I ne necessarily need a landscape, you know, a wide angle lens. And I could always, uh, you know, take several photos on the same perimeter and stitch them together if I want a wider shot. So yeah, I'm just gonna play around. Um, other than the lenses though, I will of course be bringing my tripod, which is currently strapped to my camera bag and I don't really feel like getting off, but you've seen my tripod before. We also have these torches, which you'll see are colored in red. My mum did this for us. Uh, because basically when you're doing star photography or night photography, you want a red torch because it means that you can see what you're doing in the dark uh, without meaning that, you know, because if you just turn your, uh, you know, your flashlight on on your phone, your eyes will then adjust to the light and you'll have to readjust them when you turn it off. Whereas if you use red torches, uh, your eyes will stay, you know, with their night vision. So yeah, if you're doing night photography, get yourself some red torches or just buy a torch and colour it in red. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what my mum did. I think this is like red Sharpie or red CD pen or something. Uh, so yeah, they're not hard to get. I will then of course be taking, you know, spare camera batteries, spare memory cards, etc, etc, all the usual things. But I also have a few spare props as well. I always like to bring uh, this. 
<laughs> which is uh, absolutely nothing. I think it was just, I think it was part of packaging for God knows what uh, when I moved in. Um, and yeah, it's see-through, but I used this in some of my photos in the last behind the scenes video. I don't know if it was technically the last one, but the one that I did outside. Um, and yeah, it made it like, it, get, it gave the landscape a really dreamy feel to it basically. And I really loved that. So yeah, I just bring this and all you do is you just put it over the lens like that and you shoot through it and it gives your images a really dreamy feel. So yeah, definitely bring in this. <laughs> and then I also have my prism, which I probably won't really use because it doesn't really fit the style of photography we're doing today, but I bring it anyway. And it's also just fun to play with because I mean, reflecting light will never not be cool to me. And all of that will be going in my camera bag with my tripod, which you can now see. Uh, I got this from a photography show a couple of years ago. Uh, and yeah, it's great. The camera stuff goes in here, you just push it in. And then you've got a top section as well for, you know, other stuff. So yeah, that is pretty much everything I'm going to be bringing with me. I will obviously also be wearing a coat and a hat and wrapping up warm because it's going to be bloody cold on, you know, the top of a hill in the Lake District in the middle of November. So I'm going to be wrapping up for sure. Obviously, I'll also be bringing my phone and, you know, this phone so I can film for you guys. Uh, and, you know, other stuff like headphones, water, snacks, etc. Uh, but yeah, that is really all the gear I'm bringing. So I'm going to pack it up. We are going to be leaving in about half an hour and I will see you there. here we still have an hour until the sun sets uh it was quite stressful trying to get here because these windy country roads are not easy to navigate uh there's like one signpost in the entire <laughs> region pretty much but we found it and it's very beautiful <laughs> so i've got my camera gear here we still obviously have an hour until sunset and although the sun sets at 10 past four it probably won't fully get dark until like half past at five so we got some time but i'm going to take some photos of you know the scenery anyway do some landscape photos maybe uh might even try and get down and take the photos of the water depends if i can be bothered it's already pretty chilly so i put my coat on it's only going to get colder i've also brought a hat because since i shaved my head it my head gets cold <laughs> but yeah i am going to set up my camera and start taking photos and i'll see when it gets dark
Okay, so obviously I'm incredibly red, but it is completely dark right now. So without the torch, you can't see me. So as you can see, the sun has pretty much set. However, it is wall to wall clouds, <laughs> which is quite disappointing. Uh, obviously, there's that tiny little gap in the clouds there where the sun is setting. But yeah, otherwise, it's wall to wall clouds. Uh, you know, we looked at the weather and today was supposed to be the clearest day. But and to be fair, the day was clear, but I guess it's night now. So yeah, that's disappointing. I do have my tripod set up, which you can't see at all. <laughs> Maybe if I... Can you? There you go. You can just about see the red. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take a couple of test shots, even though I know it's not going to work. Uh, it's useful to have those just as kind of proof of failure, I guess. Uh, they're useful when doing like uni or college courses and stuff, because you kind of need to you have to like explain everything basically and just say why you failed so i'm going to take a couple of photos anyway and you never know i might get some nice photos regardless uh so yeah and then we're going to move on it's like an hour's drive back uh, and there were some laybys and stuff on the way uh so and we're heading in that direction um where there is no cloud so theoretically we may come across somewhere where there is no cloud and clear skies which means we can stop and take photos so yeah, I'm going to take a few test photos here. We're going to pack up and make our way back. It's going to be a longer journey back because, of course, it's dark now. <laughs> so we need to drive carefully. Uh, and yeah, we'll see what we can do. Uh, no worries if we can't get the star photos. We're here all week, so we can always come back out. Uh, we have nothing else booked, so we're free to do whatever. Um, and yeah, well, you never know. We may find something on the way back as well. I did get some good landscape photos, though, that I'm really happy with. So yeah, let me take these test photos and then we will head back. We may have found somewhere. I know you can't really see me. My dad's just reversing the car and we found a little alcove. Um, yeah, the moon is out, which, yeah, there you go. You can see that, you can't see me. Um, but hey, you can still hear me. So yeah, my dad's just gonna pull the car in and then we're gonna see what we can get from here. It is bloody freezing though. I am so glad I have a coat. <laughs> It's working! I am back home now. It's actually been several weeks since I filmed the first video. Uh, you know, been and done the holiday, been back for a couple of weeks now, and I'm just now getting around to editing photos and video. <laughs> so, I wasn't able to film an outro or really that much of the, you know, the actual astrophotography, which is a shame, uh, but like, it was dark. <laughs> you know, there, there was nothing I could do about that, and you know, it, like, that was kind of the whole point. I needed it to be dark, and so I couldn't, you know, light the situation to film without ruining the photography. So unfortunately I couldn't film that much, but I think I did pretty good at filming, you know, at least some things. So yeah, it's a shame you weren't able to actually see me, you know, taking the photos, but if I'm being honest, uh, because, um, you know, I had to take everything on quite a long shutter speed, it was just a lot of me just press the button and then just <laughs> stand there, <laughs> you know, for like 30 seconds while it takes the photo check the photo, you know, take another one, move the camera slightly. You've all seen me take photos before. Uh, so you didn't really miss much. It was just kind of exciting because, you know, I was taking photos in the dark in the middle of nowhere of the stars. And I absolutely love how they turned out. I waited to film this outro because I wanted to edit the photos first before I filmed the outro so I could talk about them a bit. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I wasn't able to edit the photos while I was away on holiday because um i mean i brought my laptop with me but honestly it <laughs> i mean it's a good laptop it's fine but it's just it's a little bit tricky when it comes to editing photos like using applications like photoshop and premiere pro just don't work while i'm on holiday so i gave that a miss and waited till i got home but i've edited them now and i absolutely adore them. You'll have seen the photos dispersed throughout the video, but yeah, I am so happy with them, both the landscapes and the star photos. I, yeah, oh my god, I'm so happy. Um, you know, I've never really done landscape before. Uh, I've done a few, you know, outside videos, 
uh, videos, photos. <laughs> um, uh, if you watched one of the previous behind the scenes videos, actually that was, you know, I ventured out into the woods and uh, I did some kind of landscape, but it, it wasn't really a, like a big landscape, more of close land. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Just go watch the video. But I've never really done landscape on, you know, that sort of scale. And I've also never done anything like astrophotography, which is a lot more, it's, it's a bit more technically com uh, complicated because you're working in low light and everything. So you obviously you have to, you know, have a low f-stop and everything, which then means you have to drag your ISO up. So it's a difficult balance, uh, but I think I handled it pretty well. And I love how they came out. I am definitely going to be doing that again, <laughs> uh, both landscape and astrophotography. I am actually, uh, at the moment, looking for a wide angle lens. I have my eye on a couple, we're just kind of waiting for uh, confirmation on release date from one of them. So yeah, when I get those lenses, there will definitely be another behind the scenes video of me doing said shoot, uh, because I am very excited for that. <laughs> uh, I toyed with the idea of showing you my editing process for these photos. Uh, I decided not to in the end because I think this video is long enough and I didn't need to include that. But if you'd like to see me editing photos and just see the behind the scenes of my editing process, then let me know in the comments below and I can absolutely make a video on that. But yeah, for now, that is the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed watching me, uh, you know, go out into the wild. <laughs> you know, really, that was like, you can't get any more rural than that. We were at the top of the mountain in, a mi in the, the middle of goddamn nowhere. I mean... You know, you, you, you looked over because like the, the path was, not the path, the road, it was on like, you know, the edge of like a, a hill. And, you know, when it got dark, you, you looked over the road and there was just nothing. It, it was just like the void <laughs> had swallowed the valley. Uh, so, you know, it's not the darkest place in England for nothing. So, yeah, it was, yeah, it was very cool. Uh, I won't be going anywhere quite as exciting for my next sort of landscape shoot because I live much further south in England and therefore it's a bit more boring here <laughs> you know not quite as exciting as the Lake District or the S Scotland or something like that but yeah I will be doing some more videos so subscribe if you don't miss that uh give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it I thoroughly enjoyed doing this shoot and I'll definitely be doing it again uh comment down below tell me what you think of the photos they'll be going on my Instagram at some point uh which is at the photography dragon if you're interested um and yeah let me know if you're interested in my editing process or anything and i will make a video on that too but for now i hope you've enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one